Okay, how lovely to see a few of you here again. It's lovely to have you here. We're really glad and delighted that you could join us um, today. I hopefully we've got two of our ambassadors here, which is lovely to have you both here. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so you might have seen this if you've joined us before. You may have seen this from our previous workshops. My name's Alex. I'm an education advisor here at Teach 2030, and I'm going to be hosting the session today. Please make it interactive. Please keep messaging and keep telling everybody what you think. I love hearing from you all. And there's only a few of us here today, so it's really great uh, if you could chat within the um, chat box and just tell everybody about yourselves. Like Mitali's just telling us she's an English language educator. Today, as I've mentioned and, and said at the beginning, we have used this a few times in the workshops and today's focus is really gonna be on, is it clear what I want them to do? What we want our learners to do? Um, and we're gonna be focusing on this today by just having a little look at how we make our lesson objectives meaningful to our learners. As teachers, often we come up with learning objectives, but what do we do with them? And do we share them with our learners in our classroom or do we just keep them secret to ourselves? Um, hopefully by the end of this workshop, you'll have learned not to keep it a secret to yourself and to actually share those and how to share those with your learners. And hopefully you can tell us whether you found that useful. Uh, as we've been mentioning the last few workshops, we've been looking at smart, uh, smart objectives. We've been looking at using language that isn't just understand, but uh, using vocabulary such as list or uh, invent or write. Uh, these are really handy and useful just to remind you uh, that these are really handy so that learners know exactly what it is that they're going to do and achieve by the end of the lesson. And as a reminder, they're right here. You may have already received them in, in your post event materials from last month and the month before. But as a reminder, these are really handy for you to use, much better than understand. Please feel free to comment in the chat box as to whether you use any of these learning objectives and which ones you find useful. OK, so in terms of other things to say, they ensure the purpose is clear. Um, they absolutely make it obvious what the learner needs to do. And it makes easier to assess the learning as teachers. So need, learners need to see the, uh, the point of objectives as part of a bigger picture. So how the lesson objective relates to last, lessons learning, how it relates to the topic they're studying, and how the lesson objective connects the big picture and the big overall learning goal. All learners must know what they are learning and why they are learning it. Absolutely, it's not much use us standing at the front as teachers and just talking and not sharing with our learners what it is that we're trying to achieve with them. So here are some examples of some good learning objectives. By ensuring that you use smart verb at the, at the start, the actual purpose of the lesson is clear as well as the skill that those students will be learning. So if we, we're gonna come back to one of these in particular, uh, but if we take a look at the first one, to use two adjectives in a sentence, it's really clear what the learners are gonna achieve by the end. They are going to be able to put those two adjectives into a sentence at the end to draw and label the water cycle. There's no disputing exactly what we're trying to achieve by the end of this uh, lesson objective and to solve a, world, a word problem if you're teaching an English lesson like, like Natali might be doing. So how do we share them? How do we share them through? And it's one of those things where we, we can get really good at writing them, but unless the learners know what they've got to do with them, then it's something that we, we need to share for them to feel success. So this is, so the, one of the first ways to do it, so how do we make sure our learners understand the lesson objectives that we have written? So we're going to have quite a few strategies and I'm going to talk to you about quite a few strategies today. They're all going to be on a, a poster and you're going to receive them as part of the end of um, workshop materials. So you're going to get them through into your email. So the first way, we're talking about telling them. This is what we're going to learn today. 
This, these are the activities we're going to learn today to help you. And to say by the end of the lesson, you will be able to, and I will see. Now you can tell them, sometimes we get them to write them down. So, uh, with the student, sometimes you get one of them maybe to read that read it out if you've written it on the board. That's a nice way of them actually verbalizing it. Now it doesn't matter what your uh, national curriculum is or what national curriculum that you're following at all. It's lesson objectives is something that we need no matter what your curriculum. So the next one that we is ask them. Let's say you've written up the lesson objective onto the board, okay? And then what words or content do they know from this lesson objective? Have they seen the same or similar language before? What might it be asking them to do? Can you say where you think you will be at the end of the lesson? So actually saying to the students, listen, we've got words on the board, but what do you think of them? What do you think you are going to be doing today? What is it that you're going to be doing today? It can be really useful, really useful uh, way of questioning them and, and making them really consider what it is that they've done and, and are going to do. And it might even help them to connect the learning from the lesson before. Leave out a key word from the objective. Let's say you write something up on the board, you write your objective on the board, you leave out one of the words. Maybe it's list, something like that. And you say to them, well, what do you think the missing word is? And they might think, hmm, it might be this, it might be that. And that they're thinking about why it might be one of those things. And this is a nice way of linking back to the previous lessons and the previous learning. Absolutely. Please feel free to write any comments. Think about whether you've used any of these strategies so far, whether any of these are new to you or whether you have um, a, any other strategies of sharing learning objectives, please do feel free to share them. So this one, you choose. Now I use this quite a lot in the classroom. And when I write the learning objective up and I say to them, right, how do you feel about this learning objective? How confident do you feel with this learning objective? Do you think you can achieve it? Do you, th do you think you have previous knowledge? And what you can do, Get them stood up over to the left hand side. I don't know very much. The right hand side, I know an awful lot about this lesson objective. I know how to do this. And you get a feel straight away for how much the students feel confident and what they know. It can help you with differentiation. It's this idea of formative assessment. So monitoring our students' learning and knowledge as we go along. And it's really important. Now, obviously some of us have got a lot of students in the classroom and we may not want them all um, to be moving around the classroom. I sometimes use numbers. So I say, how confident do you feel? Give me uh, one is the least, five is the most, and you just get them to show them your fingers. And that's quite a nice way if you don't really want your students to move around. So this is right at the very start of the lesson that we have this you choose idea. So perhaps somebody comes in if the, if the um, lesson objective is that you want them to be able to list five adjectives by the end of this lesson. So you're teaching them about adjectives. They didn't know what they were before. You're teaching them adjectives. You're going to teach them five different ones, 10 different ones throughout the lesson. And at the start, you have list. Uh, today, we're going to list adjectives. Um, and you make that into your uh, lesson objective. How confident do you feel about that? And a student might go like this. And at the end of the lesson, what you can then do is say, how confident do you feel now? They might say something like this, or perhaps they might go like this. Obviously, if we know that if they're at this level, then they feel really confident. And if they're here, it's worth taking note of at that moment and going, well, perhaps we need to do a little bit more work on it uh, next lesson than we need to do to move forward with our learning with it next lesson. So you choose is quite a handy one. Please, again, feel free to write in the chat at any point. Do, have you heard of any of these strategies? What do you think of them? Keep introducing yourself. Absolutely. OK. 
Okay. So the next one. Um, hidden lesson objective. Tell the learners that you are going to teach the, uh, the lesson and they have to try to work out what the lesson objective is. The learners then share their ideas at the end. Now, this one can work really well because what they're trying to, what it can often tell you is whether you actually taught that lesson in a way that conveyed the ideas effective, effectively, because quite often a student can come back and say, well, I think the lesson objective was this. And you say, oh, that's interesting because actually this was my objective. And what it can do, it, it can almost be a bit of feedback on your teaching and often they're absolutely accurate. Sometimes they're better. They make, they make it much more high level, the objective than you had, had intended. Often it can be the other way as well. Hopefully it will be spot on. Thank you very much, Mitali. Which one did you find excellent? Thank you very much for sharing that. So, in your post event materials, you are going to receive this poster. This is a downloadable poster. And what this will enable you to do is to print this off into your classroom. And what you can then do is have it beside you as you are um, designing your lessons. So that once you've used your smart learning objectives, actually you can think about how you're going to introduce these to your learners because it's all very well us knowing exactly what we want the students to achieve but what's really useful is the students themselves knowing their own journey what it was they had achieved last lesson what are they going to achieve this lesson and what they're going to move forward to as well it provides that and instills that confidence and that real identity and ownership of learning as well please feel free to drop any notes into the um, chat and let us know what you think of any of these ideas, whether you've used any at all. So let's have a think. As promised, we only make these 15 minutes. So we keep them very, very short because of the fact that we, we know it's a Saturday and we don't want to take up your time too much on a Saturday. So we keep them very short, just 15 short minutes, and you do receive the post-event materials. So just to recap today, use a smart verb. So the action or the skill uh, that they, they need to learn is very, very clear. So remember, these smart verbs are precise. They're not just to understand and they are absolutely precise. Hello, Mercy, lovely to see you here. Make sure you have taken the time to explain and introduce that lesson objective. Do feel free to plan some time into your lesson plan. Often on my lesson plan, I will put that the first five minutes is about discussion of the lesson plan, the lesson objective with the students. And that's absolutely okay in many, many uh, schools to actually put that into your lesson objective, especially if you're gonna reflect on it towards the end as well. Refer back to the lesson objective throughout uh, the lesson as a reminder to the learners exactly what it is that they are learning. Again, it's about that communication, the communication of the lesson objective. Now, we have reached the end of our very short workshop today. Please, please, please feel free to place in some feedback into the um, chat. Thank you so much, Natali. That's really useful of you to say. Uh, she said, thank you, Alex. The discussion was very fruitful. Thank you so much. Please feel free to put any comments in. Just a reminder, so many of you um, I know already take our courses. But how can you continue uh, developing your teaching practice? So the first way is to take our low data bite-sized courses for teachers just like you. All we need to do is to visit teach2030.com and sign up to our courses. They, part one is completely free. There is also a discount code that you will receive as part of this post event material, which means that you actually get part two free as well. So you can take a course completely free and there is no catch to that. It is completely free. Attend more of our 15 minute workshops. We have another one next month um, in October. It's towards the end of October, absolutely. 
join us live on Facebook and YouTube. We always have discussions. There are posts, there are daily posts on uh, our Facebook and YouTube pages. Please, we really love seeing engagement from you. Please feel free to comment on the bottom. If the question is asked, please feel free to answer it. Uh, we love hearing your comments and we love hearing your feedback and what your thoughts are. We want it to very much be a live discussion. And sign up our, our email at uh, a newsletter at teach2030.com. It's really easy to remember. What I'm also going to do for you today is I'm actually going to put my email address on. We are always, always um, interested in uh, hearing from you directly. So what I'm going to do is just type in my email address. Please drop me an email and give me, you're going to receive a, um, a click through to a questionnaire. We love to hear your responses on those questionnaires and a lot of the social media is based purely on the feedback that you give us from the workshops. Please, 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 if you also want to drop me a note or you want to have a conversation with me directly and want to participate in a workshop for next month, we are looking for you to lead certain areas and send us some videos about what you thought and whether you've implemented any of the strategies. Please do drop me an email directly and uh, we'll get you involved for next month. We are coming to an end now. I think I'm... It's 20 past, so I've just gone over by a few minutes. But I'm going to let you leave this up and let you have any final conversations before I end the meeting. Please feel free to drop any notes in and provide any feedback straight away before we say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us, and we really look forward to seeing you next month. Take care.